Will Final Cut Pro for iPad 2 finally be the desktop replacement editing software we've been wanting for the iPad? Or is it pretty much the same thing? Let's talk about that right now. Before we get into this, I've been using a pre-release version of the Final Cut Pro for iPad 2, as well as the Final Cut Pro, uh, Final Cut Camera. It's a tongue twister. Final Cut Camera for the <laughs> for the iPhone 15 Pro Max, because you can sync these together to do multi-cam and a variety of different things. With that said, my thoughts and my thoughts only. Let's talk about Final Cut Pro. I use it all the time. This is my main editing software for my timelines, my B-roll, my callouts, etc. I do my color grading in DaVinci Resolve primarily because the software is fantastic for that. And I use Premiere once in a while if I need to for let's say text-based editing or if I need to use you know, some sort of After Effects or different tools, I will use that. But for the most part, 90% of my work is done on Final Cut Pro on my Mac Studio. With that said, I've been wanting something for the iPad for quite a period of time. I was using LumaFusion, like a lot of you out there, and LumaFusion is a great, great software. It's fantastic, but it's not Final Cut. So when they released Final Cut last year, I played around with it a little bit, but I was like, it's good, but I was expecting a little bit more. And I think some of you out there were feeling the same thing, but it's great for kind of just assembling your timeline, doing some of the basic things, and then you know bring it into your, into your uh, desktop respectively. So when we were in Battersea for the launch of the iPad Pro M4 and the iPad Air 2, they showed us Final Cut Pro iPad 2. And we were excited, we we're like, okay, this looks great. Obviously you're seeing the power of the M4 chip with you know scene masking and all these different attributes coming into play, how fast it edits, the rendering, it is, it's awesome. And then of course, multicam. So I was thinking, okay, there must be more underneath the hood that's gonna really make this a competitive desktop replacement. And the short answer is, while it's got new features, it's not going to be your one and only editing software. Well, let me put it this way. It depends on your editing style. Now for me, as you see on my videos here, I do like to do a lot of jump cuts, zooming in, zooming out, a lot of call outs, a lot of text, things like that, or some tracking of subjects like lenses or cameras once in a while, things like that, this cannot do to the extent that I wanted to do it. I am still reliant on the desktop software or on a you know, MacBook Pro or on the Mac Studio respectively. For other people out there that are just gonna be doing, let's say vlogging or basic edits, I mean, not even basic edits, but things that don't require a lot of those third-party softwares, you're gonna like what this does. And there's things that this does that even the desktop doesn't even do, like case in point, you know, writing on the screen and doing things like that, that's cool. And adds like sort of a title transition or the scene mask, which is drop it in immediately. It's, it's fast, it's fluid, it's pretty damn accurate, and it's instantaneous here on the M4. So there's great things that you can do with this that you can't do with the desktop software, but at the same time, there's so many things that I was hoping that was gonna come from the desktop Final Cut Pro and come into the iPad version for iPad version two, but it's not quite there. Of course, you can edit off this now, so you can save some space on your iPad, which is fantastic. Thunderbolt drive, Thunderbolt port, you're good to go. Love that, because that's how I edit here on the Mac Studio, and I'll show you how this works with the camera, so let's get into this right now. First and foremost, you wanna see how the pencil works. Let's just take the pencil out here. So this is a Nikon lens video. Obviously, this will be coming out very, very soon. It's on the 2400, the very versatile lens, but I'm just playing around with this so you get an idea what it does. There it is. Obviously the clip was a little bit short, but you got you get the sense of it, which is fast, fluid, intuitive. Then you've got the masking on this, okay? So case in point, copy, drop this on here. Go to effects, scene removal mask, drop this here. It's instantaneous. And I've got my text right behind me. Again, now the masking is not 100% perfect. You're gonna see there's a little bit of shadow here as we uh, play through this. See right there where my hand is kind of coming in into the number eight. So it's not 100% perfect, but again, it does a pretty decent job. Too bad you cannot fine tune this mask. That's not something you can do currently at this point in time, but hopefully they allow you to do that in future firmware updates. Because if I was to do that on desktop software, that requires more knowledge and more tools that I have currently. So this makes things a lot, lot easier. Okay, so that's one of the attributes. Of course, you can add different backgrounds of this. You can mask things out. I was just playing around with this timeline to give you an idea of what can happen here. Now, let's show you a little bit about multicam, which I think for content creators is going to be absolutely awesome. Let's say you want to do a top-down shot. Let's say you're opening a box or whatever the case may be. You want to make it much more intuitive and simple. This is going to save you a lot of time. This is kind of like the Blackmagic camera app. It's not as detailed as the Blackmagic camera app in terms of the features but you get much more manual controls over your exposure, your autofocus or manual focus, you get focus peaking, you can change the, you know, if you want ProRes or H.265. But the really cool thing is going into multicam. And now I can actually control the camera 
through Final Cut Pro for iPad 2. And if I want to get into a little bit more settings, I can do that. I can change this up. I can landscape. Everything's there. If I want to drop this to make it ProRes, I can add and make it ProRes. If I want to do that, for example, just kind of, you know, max that out. I got my controls here so I can do manual focus if I want to do that. I can do exposure, white balance. I can change that a bit because my room here is 4,800 Kelvin. So I want to dial that in so it's exact rear camera, front camera, and then I can do shots like this. So I can record now from the iPad. I put set up a rig above my desk and I'm here working on the iPad. So you're seeing all that come into play. And then when I'm done, I hit stop recording. It's going to save that file in Final Cut. And then I can just drop it in if I want to do that. So I have that option, which is absolutely awesome. Now I can play that over here, rotate it, make it bigger. And now I've got a top down shot that I've just imported in immediately. It's all done very easy again this is just sort of a, a demonstration to show you but if you have multiple iphones you can do that or ipads and they were showing it they were at like four or five different iphones and like the question i had in my head was how many people have four or five different iphones i have one got an ipad you can do it you can put the camera app on the ipad as well so you can use it that way but still that's it's a lot but again if you're a production company you have multiple iphones you can now use multicam right into final cut pro for ipad 2 which is cool overall thoughts on this it depends on your workflow. If this is gonna work for you or not, for me personally, if I'm on the go and I need to assemble my A-roll, this is going to be great for that. In different transitions or different effects that are not available on the iPad app, I'm gonna to have to go back in my desktop. So if you're doing something that doesn't require third-party plugins, you're going to really enjoy what this app has to offer. And I think this offers a really good um, option as well. Now there's one thing missing on the Final Cut camera app Hopefully Apple can add this in and it's in the Blackmagic one. And that is manually adjusting what microphone you're using. Because sometimes here, let's say I get a, uh, a product sent to me and I want to put it onto my Instagram stories. I'm going to use the rear camera. I'm going to be recording and I'll be talking. Natively, the iPhone will use the rear microphone for the rear camera. In the Blackmagic camera app, I can assign the microphone to be the front microphone as I'm talking and the rear camera recording. So I'm getting much better audio. In this Final Cut camera app, you can't do that yet. So hopefully they will be able to change that in the future. Apple, that'd be an awesome feature to bring into this because it's already there. Blackmagic is doing it and it's a free app. I think we can. Anyway, guys, those are my thoughts on these two apps. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Would you subscribe and use Final Cut Pro for iPad 2? Or would you use something else? I'd love to hear from you guys. And what do you guys think of the Final Cut uh, camera app? as well. Love to hear from you on that. And if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. More content on the way. Take care, stay safe, and I'll chat to you soon. Bye.